Al's a fan favorite. He's in no problem. So we're going to have Al present and, and talk through a couple of things tonight. All right, Al, it's all yours. I just want to show you all a couple of things. We'll talk about uh, Security Onion, and we'll also talk about uh, Teapot Honey Pot. Uh, let's see. All right. So a couple of things, uh, still like the last six months or something. All right. So uh, a, a couple of things. So I work as a uh, principal engineer now for uh, Medicare and Medicaid. And so we've been working on a couple of different projects. We've been working on, uh, basically we've been working on a honeypot project where you create what they call deception and lures and you're able to create countermeasures and controls from looking at, you know, where the adversary tries to attack your network. Now, here's the great thing about this. This is actually becoming pretty popular nowadays, right? So in, in the past, I think they had a company called Ativo, and, uh, but now they got another uh, two. CrowdStrike makes a uh, honeypot too, but we also talked about building one. So when you look at the honeypots, they have a couple of different things. You have a honeypot and you have a honey net. So this is actually a honey net where you have a group of honey pots, and, and most of these are open source honey trap, Dionea, uh, Crowry, and uh, it's a couple of more if you notice across the top. But this is becoming pretty popular. And so what the uh, what the industry is doing is actually taking this stuff and commercializing it. So what they do is they create these honey pots, but they allow a capability so that you can actually see what the attacker is actually doing, right? So it records the steps. And what they do is they correlate this with the miter. And for those who don't know what the miter is, I know we talked about it before, but the miter, the miter is actually uh, what some people say is a, uh, it's a framework that actually gives you a couple of things. It talks about reconnaissance and it talks about, you know, initial access. Oh, let's see if we can get a better one. Uh, I usually use a interactive one too. And I'll show you why it's important. All right, here we go. So, and we can we can use this page. It's a different uh, it's a different view you can look at too. But I don't know if you notice across the top, you see tactics and techniques, right? So just to show you some, uh, I'll show you this. If we go to Indeed and you type in like TTPs. Uh, so if you look at, let's see if they say it in here. A lot of these jobs, you'll see this in cybersecurity. It'll say TTPs, right? And this stands for tactics, techniques, <clears throat> excuse me, tactics, techniques, and procedures. So when you look at, let's see if we can get a different view. Here we go, right here. So the miter, once you get a threat, you can actually look at the miter and you can kind of look at the telemetry on how an attacker um, compromised your network. For example, you look at reconnaissance, right? So he did active scanning, right? He's using a, a tool like Nmap or one of those. And then if you wonder how he got in, right? Maybe he sent a phishing email. 
And then, you know, you can go across the model. You can look at how, he, you know, techniques for how they gain uh, access to your credentials. And a lot of people look at things like lateral movement, right? So here's why this is important. When you look at, um, when you look at these honeypots, what happens is they have commercialized this. And so you are able to tell the tactics, techniques, and procedure that an attacker does to get onto your network by viewing a honeypot because it allows him access. So the honeypot is really what you call a lure, right? So you open, you. so for example, let's say you build a, uh, you know, a Ubuntu box and you got port 22 open to the world and, you know, uh, you know, SSH, you know, remote desktop and all that. So you're able to let the uh, adversary get in and then you can see if they use things like Metasploit and Meterpreter and, excuse me, and all those good tools to get in on your network. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. This is actually pretty popular and uh, this is really easy to install and you can put it on your, you know, put it on a network, give all access to it and you can kind of see where the attacker um, is trying to get into your network. And so that allows you to kind of build a baseline and say, hey, oh man, we, we got, you know, we got people hitting, you know, our web servers, we got people hitting the website and you can, um, you can, from there, you can implement countermeasures and controls, right? You can implement your countermeasures and controls and kind of, you know, put some put some things in place. You know, it, it kind of tells you where your attack surface is being attacked. But this is a really good tool. So I do it more or less in a uh, AWS environment, and we use this thing called Space Siren and using Canary tokens, which is a really good thing. But using these tools can help you get a job. So that's kind of why I focused on that. I just wanted to throw that out there. Now, let's see. I, um, let's see. Uh, cool question. So is there any reason why you uh, picked teapot out of all the honeypots? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Teapot, actually. So a couple of uh, more open source ones is Honey Trap is one, uh, Cowery or however you say it. But um, I, put, I picked teapot because it actually incorporates all these. So all these are actually honeypots, right? All uh, this is one by itself. Um, you know, this is just Crowry by itself. So I use Teapot because it uses all of them. Now, what would be really cool is uh, you can actually. Oh, I'll show you something else too. Uh, let's let's do this. Um, this is kind of old, but you can still take the concept. So you can actually deploy like Cowery, uh, say, but you can actually deploy it and then you can visualize it in Splunk, right? I think they, I thought they had a screenshot somewhere. Uh, do they? Yeah, they got a screenshot. So you can actually visualize this in Splunk. So for example, and so th this is why I think these things are important, right? Let's say you're an analyst or you're an engineer, you work in a SOC or you work on a team and uh, and you work for somebody like, I don't know, it could be the federal government, it could be a Fortune 500 company, but they want to see how you contribute to the team. So let's say they got a honeypot, whether it's, you know, um, Shadowplex or whether it's, you, you know, uh, a Tebow or one of those, but you understand and know how to use Splunk. So how you can actually show your uh, your value is you say, hey, we can build a dashboard. I can put that in Splunk each day. You know, we look at the um, we look at the dashboard. We see if there's any APTs associated with it. And if you see here, you got these malicious IPs and you don't have to do that. It's not a lot of work. If you notice, these are coming from China. You look at the spark line. You can just tell the firewall guy, hey, we need to block these, you know, whether it's once a week or twice a week or even once a month, but now you're providing some level of uh, some level of defense and debt just by the dashboard you built. And so this is actually pretty cool, man. And, and, and this stuff is free, right? This is free. You not you can play with this on your own time. And actually what you could do is you can build your own Splunk server. And just to show your value, you can uh, let's see. I don't know if I can bring it up where it came, but I applied actually, huh? Let's do this. I talked about this before, but you can go on, go to the Splunk site, put in, and I and they'll give you 10 gigs for a developer license, right? So, and you guys probably already knew that, but you can get your developer license. And so 
you know, allows you to play around with it for a little while. Uh, it's 10 gig is better than the little 500 gig limit that 500 meg uh, limit they give you. And then, uh, you know, show some value. But this is really easy, man. This is actually a wonderful site, too. It's called medium.com. They got a lot of good stuff in here, all type of stuff. But, uh, I'm sorry, what was you saying? thought somebody was asking something. But anyway, I just wanted to show you guys that. I was thinking since we've been working on it at work, and what I do at work is I always come home and try to build something that correlates with what I'm doing at work and just play around with it. So, But let's talk about Security Onion, man. Um, Security Onion used to be, it's called Security Onion Solutions now, right? Let's see something real quick. I just want to see. Oh, good. It's coming up. All right. So I was actually, uh, I used to use Security Onion back in the day, right? It was always one of those uh, tools that, you know, it was IDS, IPS, you know, it had Snort and it, I think it used to have what you call Seagill. And you always could kind of visualize your threats and all your, your, uh, your network activity and all that good stuff, packet capture, all that. So they kind of have evolved it a little bit, right? And, and so what I've been noticing is everybody is moving toward like a SOAR platform um, environment. So, and what I mean by SOAR, we call it SOAR security orchestration and automation response. So in other words, you have this piece of software that goes out, uh, Splunk uses Phantom, you got Swimlane, you got Palo Alto uses the Misto with some open source ones, Shuffle and all that good stuff. But it goes out. So let's say you get a threat, right? You get a threat that comes in in the network. It will actually look at the IP, tell you the IP reputation. And then from there, it would initiate a block in a firewall and, you know, you know, create the ticket for you, whether you're using JIRA, a lot of people use service now and all that good stuff. But here's the best part about that. Everybody's moving toward that concept, but most of these tools you use for free, they'll give you a portion of that, but it won't be, you know, it won't be streamlined or you'll have to write scripts and APIs and all that good stuff to set it up. But Security Onion has actually evolved. Let's see what I got. Okay. Read it. Okay. So they, they actually have incorporated a lot of stuff in here, man, which is pretty cool. So I set up Security Onion. It's really easy to set up. You know, we won't go through that. You can, it's just a distro. Um, in other words, you download it. You can either buy an appliance if you want to use a production version. But it, I would suggest if you use a production version, you have a manager and you have some sensor nodes that pushes it up to that manager. But Right now, I just use the evaluation version, and you can use the evaluation version on smaller network, but it has Circada, Kibana, and all that good stuff in it now. So we'll just take a look at some of the tools that it has. And and I know we talked about, you know, you, you often hear people talk about, you know, they want to have their own cybersecurity business. They want to use, um, you know, they want to build out a SOC and that good stuff. So these are some great tools to use. And so he, here's what I noticed. So Security Onion also has the, the Security Onion Manager where you got all your stuff, but actually, they also have a, uh, I think it's like an Analyst Workstation, which is pretty cool, right? Analyst VM, that's what it is, right? This, this is actually pretty cool. So if you think about a contained environment, when you work in a SOC or any one of the, for, for those who worked in a SOC, you have a device that you use that's really contained, right? It only has the tools that you want. And so if you're building out a, a environment for a SOC or something like that for someone, hey, you don't want to give, you don't want them in that searching Facebook, right? Searching Facebook and, you know, playing solitaire and goofing off in your time. But the good thing about it is you can use this box and be effective. The goal is to be infected to triage threats. So you can actually use this box. It's called an analyst VM. And so when you think about from the perspective of VDI, think about how fast you can roll this out, right? You're using VDI solution. You know, a lot of people don't use it anymore, but you just create a golden image, Amazon VM security hub, uh, not security hub, security on you, push it out and you're good to go, right? You can lock it down from there. So this, this is a really good tool, man. You probably want to check it out. And it comes with a uh, network miner and Wireshark and some other visibility tools, which are great. And so let's hop over here. Let's get into, let me get out of here real quick. Uh, all right. So I just logged in. This is, the, this is the initial page that you get, right? But let's talk a little bit about setup first. 
<clears throat> so this is my actual network, right? I um, I go out and I generate a bunch of malicious traffic. I, uh, you know, go to a bunch of crazy sites and all that good stuff just to generate some traffic in here. Now, unfortunately, I th <laughs> I think I done did something because I, I haven't been generating the traffic for the last month or so, and it's still coming in. But that's okay. It's just, that's the dummy network, but you know, whatever works. Um, so you got a couple of different things on the side. So, oh, just to, to, to hop back on this before I forget. So in order to get this traffic in, I simply create what we call a mirror or a spam port. And so for those who don't know what that is, for those who do, I'll just, just talk about it anyway. All I'm doing is forwarding traffic to a uh, particular port. And we'll, we'll just visualize that really quick. So I just pull up a router or something for the WAN traffic. So here, here's my WAN interface, right? So this is where I got my internet coming in at, right? This is my internet coming in on this WAN port, it's Ether O, and this is just simply an interface. And so what I do is I just mirror that traffic to this port. And so different switches have different configuration. This was pretty easy. You just click on the switch, configure it, and you just choose mirror and pick the, uh, Pick what port you want it to mirror from. So everything that comes in on this network from my WAN also is mirrored to this ETH, the ETH7 port, right? So it's just a mirror port, right? And so SPAN does the same thing. It, just, it does the same exact thing. So everything I get here, and from here, from this port here, I go directly into my security onion box. So everything that comes in the network will actually go to that port. And then because I plug the security on your box into that port, it'll see all the traffic, right? It'll see all the traffic. Now I use it Circada in the background for IDS. Um, and so that's why you see Circada right here for the event module, right? So from there, you get a bunch of alerts, right? And so here's the cool thing about this. In the past, you would get these alerts, right? And you can drill down, but it used to just have a, you know, the little, uh, the little carrot where you can expand. But here you can actually drill down, right? You just click, right click, and it'll actually drill down into that alert. And you can actually see source and destination IP. So the good thing about this is now I can expand this, right? Gives me, it even gives me geo information, which is awesome. But let's say, you know, who cares, right? Who cares? We know we know 173 is, you know, it could be from California, could be from China, but we need to check the IP reputation. You can even click on this again. You click actions, and it'll actually, you can go right out to virus total. And it'll tell you, it'll say it's clean, right? So, which is, which is pretty cool. So this is not actually saw a functionality because it will work where it does it automatically, but they do have the capability of doing that and what, what we call playbooks in the industry. But that, that's a that's a pretty good feature. You know, you don't have to, you know, go off the screen. You can go right in there, see what it is. And it also has this feature called hunt, right? So you can hunt for actually for other events associated with that. Now, let's see, we'll, we'll see what happens. And it probably won't get so this uses Zeke, right? And and you don't get much from that because it's just a just traffic I generated by going to a site. But for those who understand stuff like CNC traffic, you can see like the count. Okay, it's talking to this server. You can look at the timeline, and you also can go down here to events. You can look at, oh, it's coming over UDP. It could be a high port, like these are high ports, you know, and stuff like that. So it's, it's not a bad, that, that that piece is really pretty good, you know, for, for free software. I think that's awesome. And so it has a, a, a couple of other tools. You can look at PCAPs. So this is pretty good. Let's say you just practicing, right? You, you're trying to get a job in cybersecurity. You practice in, um, you practice in some incident response stuff. You can actually use SO import or you can just pull in PCAPs, right? I will use SO import. This is a lot of crap to put in, but you can add a job, but you can actually use SO import and pull in PCAPs and just analyze them, right? You can you can analyze them. It's great. Uh, this right here is called a grid. So I got one server here, and I just named it SO product, right? I, did, I got one server. But typically, if you're using a for an enterprise deployment, what you would do is create the manager, 
And then you would use sensor nodes. So back in the day, I used to do like, a, well, I used to mess around with Aruba deployments. And the, the, uh, the manager node, in other words, for wireless deployment would not terminate APs. In other words, all it would do is accept the connection, right? It would uh, accept the connection and the, the APs will push up all the, uh, you know, all the stats and everything. So think about it this way. This is the actual manager. You will put sensors out in your environment because you may have multiple uh, switch stacks in different places. And then it would all push back into the manager node. In this case, I just got it sitting on all one box. So this just gives you the status of each one, which is pretty cool. Now, he, 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 here's, here's a great thing. Even though it says download, this is awesome. Uh, this uses elastic, right? Has an elastic component. It also uses the WUSA. You know, we talked about the WUSA. Uh, I wonder if my WUSA is still working. Uh, let's see. Do I got it? Yeah, I might have a couple of nodes and it may not be on. So I actually built a was I server. I have a, um, uh, yeah, I got 27 agents. I got 27 agents in mind, but they, they just need to be started. But, uh, so this is actually pretty cool, man. You can look at security events where I talked about this a while ago, but this is actually pretty cool. What's up with that? Let's go back a couple of days. Uh, let's just do maybe three months or something. Hmm. I wonder if it's because it off. All right. We're not going to spend too much time on this. I got a bunch of connect, but this is actually the was our server. I got a bunch of disconnected hosts. So this will tell you like the security events and stuff. I just got all my hosts and stuff shut off. But actually, Security Onion actually has all this built in already. Now, is it as elaborate as that one? Nope, it's not. It, it, it's not. And it does do uh, some of the same features. I would actually, if you're going to run the WUSA, I would do it on the standalone box. I use a standalone box. So uh, I just want to check something real quick. Yeah, I got most of my machines uh, off. So that's why I say it's disconnected. But but anyway, Security Onion has all the uh, you know, the packages you can download to pull the information in. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with OS Query, but OS Query is wonderful too. Uh, you know, you can do you can also install what you call Fleet to manage several OS Query deployments. And OS Query will allow you to look at it, you know, actually uh, threats on the box, operating system. Um, all type of changes and everything. This is a wonderful product too. But ooh, excuse me, Security Onion has all this built in, which is awesome. And so let's click right here. And, and so if you notice here, it also has Elastic built in. So you get some reporting for OSEC logs, syslog server events alerts and you can actually drill down if you want by host it makes you a host or two i just rebooted it so yeah these are just osec that's just uh the actual alerting process on each one so yeah that's the actual box itself but you also have that capability so you can actually install those um clients on a box i may have it i thought i threw it on one box let me see uh let's see if we go back a couple of uh, let's just change this to months right it will get away from you if you go too long so i don't know it's not giving me any action for the uh 
think I, oh, maybe it was taking its time. Yeah, you, sometimes it'll show a, um, well, it will show a actual IP for the, um, if you put the WSI client on there, and uh, you can also use the WinLog B. I just, uh, so if you install these packages, it'll actually show up in Kibana and give you some uh, additional metrics. I just upgraded this thing. They came out with a new, uh, some new package. I just upgraded it the other day, so, but. It's not bad. So it has Kibana here, which is really good for visualization. You can put this on a board and, you know, come in and create some fancy dashboards. You can change this around. Uh, let's talk about this really quick. Grafania is pretty cool. So in this case, let's see, hopefully it gives us a metric. I just rebooted it. Yeah, it gives us a couple of metrics. But this gives you like the uh, the overall view of your actual box, you know, which is actually pretty cool. Now, you can actually build these da Grafania dashboards for several different things. You can build this for, like, you know, domain controllers. Uh, I would do it for something like a Lambda uh, machine, and you can look at, you know, the volume, and it also affects the cost when you're looking at AWS and things of that nature. So that's pretty cool. And let's see. So this is actually cool, too. So CyberChef, let's see. Uh, uh, let's give it a second. Come on. Uh, come on. Well, our cyber chef going. We'll talk about playbooks. Let's make sure. Okay. So here, here's a great thing. This is what I was talking about before. Let's see if so. Yeah. I don't know why it's taking so long. Maybe it's gonna come up. Maybe not. And 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 actually, this actually works. Uh, the whole security on your platform actually works a little smoother than you'll see now. The issue is that. I got it running on like a desktop box, you know, even though it has 64 gigs, but it's a old, old box. But um, you can actually create and run playbooks, right? You can create and run these playbooks for different, uh, different, uh, different uh, alerts and stuff you get, right? You can run these playbooks, which are actually pretty cool. So I thought about getting more into running these playbooks. Uh, it would be a great thing. Uh, you can actually create some, you can actually modify them. I don't know if you can create some additional ones, but you can actually modify them and everything. And I'll show you how this ties in, right? So this is what I was talking about with the whole SOAR platform. Let's see the cyber chef. I don't know if that's going to come up or not. I have to look and see if something happened with the new update or if it's doing something crazy. Uh, let's talk. So Fleet DM just manages several uh, OS query uh, boxes. But let's talk about the hive. Hopefully my hive is working. Yeah. All right. So essentially you see these alerts that come from the hive. Check this out. So here's what happens. This is what I was telling you. Now we're going to tie this all together. So I'm an analyst at a SOC. I'm using my analyst VM. I monitor the security onion console, right? And these are the only tools I have. I run it and I get an alert, right? I get an alert. It says, uh, you know, ET external user, you know, metadata retriever client. Uh, well, let's do this one. possible malware, right? Neutrino malware. So I'm the first line of the, res the first line of response. I click on this and drill down in it. And I say, hey, okay, we drill down in it. Okay, we look at this IP. This looks like Ashburn, Virginia, though. Uh, let me look at this real quick. Sorry, I go off on a tangent. That look, that may be Ashburn, Virginia. Yeah, I think that might be Ashburn. I gotta make sure I'm be doing stuff while I'm on a work VPN. But anyway, let's say I get this IP and it's freaking, um, you know, it's from China or something, right? And I say, okay, I need to escalate this. So I'll click right here. Uh, Ashley, I'll escalate it. We're going to escalate that alert. And it says, uh, alert has been escalated, removed from view, right? So now I go to the hive. I clicked on uh, Renny. And I it comes in right here. It comes in right here to the hive. And I can actually run a playbook on this. But here's what we're going to do. I click right here. I say, man, look, I know a guy who can fix this. His name is Otha. 
He knows all about this. And so now, from a SOC perspective and help desk perspective, you can um, you can actually uh, uh, assign people tickets, right? Or they can go in and assign themselves tickets. Now, you also have this thing called responders, right? And it's going to tell you it's not available. Let's see if we can do... So here, let's try this. Uh, let's see. So the Hive uses this thing called a cortex. Huh. Look like it's not working. Just go back here. Hey, I hate the cortex. Uh, let's see if we can get to the cortex one more time. So the hive uses the cortex does the um, it does all the parsing of the data and the uh, there we go. Yeah, let's see if it comes up. All right. So this is actually the core tech. Let's see if I can get to the, let's see, organization. I want to be able to show y'all some, how we put in the, let's see if I can go here. Ah, let's log out. Uh, what other password I got? Uh, let's see if A stamps will work and we just do this. Oh. Uh, I don't know the password. Try Cisco123. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. So actually, when I, when I install Security Onion, if you notice, it doesn't have anything for the Cortex on here. So I figured this piece out myself because I know the Hive uses the Cortex for a back end. So what happens is you can actually run tasks on these, right? So what I did is I just, I was doing a demo for this before, but this is a top level domain, maybe hostile. And so you can actually create tasks for these, right? And so I just put the tasks in here. I put review IP reputation from OSINT using like, you know, mal code and any run tools. But what you can do with the cortex is, you see, these are called analyzers. I put these in myself. And so all I did, all you have to do is you go in here to analyzers and see they come up. And then all you have to do is configure these by putting in like, you know, your API keys and all that stuff. So if you notice for me, what I did was this, I actually, Let's cancel this out. Uh, what I actually did, I actually got this from Oath a long time ago. Uh, I don't see it. Let's see if I got it in here. And, and basically what I did was, let's see if it comes up. Yeah, I created a, um, a Gmail account and just named the API key. And so I just dumped all my APIs in, in, uh, just in here. I got a bunch of API keys. So, uh, so here for your analyzer, some of these are free. Some of them you have to pay for. I only use the free ones. And so, man, you go in here and you uh, add, like I got a virus total one, and you add your uh, analyzers. And so then once you, let's go back. Once you build your, uh, start getting your data in and escalating, you can use your analyzers to automatically analyze what they call observables, right? I call them IOCs. So if you get like IPs, you may see in here, this 34, right? You add information, it's an observable, and you can go in and it'll automatically analyze everything. And so it's not the full SOAR capability, but you do have some capabilities of, uh, of kind of, you know, saying, oh, this is malicious. You escalate it to the hive and then it does, uh, you know, it does all your OSINT and stuff for you because you got it built in into the cortex. And so another piece of this is, 
uh, you can call it, it's called MIPS. Uh, you can actually create what you call a MIPS server. Let's see, I got a MIPS server, but I'm not sure if it's running. Uh, let's see, is my MIPS server running? Uh, might be. Let's see if we can get some action out of that. Uh, let's see if it's running. It might be running. Then we get a pass. Ah, damn. I don't know the password. So I had all this stuff set up before, but I um uh, I got a patio man with some lights and stuff, and I couldn't. I don't know. So I don't know what it's doing. It's probably just need some services or some probably need to be restarted. But I got a patio and I couldn't find a breaker. I thought it was something that they cut the breakers on and off, but it's, all you do is reset a little light switch outside. So. You know, I had everybody over for the fourth trying to help. You know, you got a bunch of men. They think they know everything, older guys. And tell me, it's got to be one of the breakers. And I was like, no, nah, don't cut the breaker with my servers on there. And boom. So I was just glad it came back on, to be honest. But I'll get it all up when I get time. But the good thing about this is, so everything I'm showing you, all this stuff is actually free. So all these alerts I just generated and I just, uh, you know, they all come from the alert screen. I click on them and push them over to the hive, right? And all this is built into security on you. And you can go through some other setups. So I were really, I think I've seen the security on you in class. I think I've seen one that was kind of high, but I think they had one for maybe like, maybe, I don't know, 300 bucks or something. But this is a wonderful tool, man. I, I mean, imagine you getting your alerts in, you can escalate it to different teams. And so I just got names by here, like old, uh, I think I got Ethan and, you know, stuff like that. I think I put a couple of more people in here just to test, but all these are just alerts I clicked on. And so you can allow, you know, the individuals with the SO analyst machine to come in here and, you know, triage certain alerts. I mean, P2P activity, that's me downloading uh, books and stuff. But, and so the, the, uh, we used to talk about the MITRE before. I think this is the attack navigator. This is actually a really good tool, man. Uh, I would I would really advise anybody that's going to do uh, cybersecurity uh, to understand the MITRE attack framework and the kill chain. And so you can actually highlight these, right? So this used to be called the, uh, this is called the attack navigator, but it used to be called interactive MITRE framework. So you can actually, you know, I mean, Man, you know, break this down. You get an alert. If you're going to be a threat hunter, no matter what you do, like supply chain compromise, right? You can create layers and really use this tool, technique colors. And so you could, when you're on an interview, you can actually just talk about this. You can bring this up and talk about it, different threats. How do you handle phishing? You bring this up, the attack navigator, right? You know, um, you know, what do you do? What do you know about lateral movement? You talk about how the attacker gets in, how he executes a, a technique, how he develops persistence to stay on the network, how he evades antivirus, and you know, and then you can talk about how he does lateral movement, and then you talk about command and control. When you get on the interview, you can just go through this stuff, and it's all this stuff is basic. Here's the great part: we talked about let's see, Microsoft ATP Defender, right? Uh, I'm going to put like use cases or something. Let's see. Uh, one of those HP help investigate. Uh, let's try this one, right? Uh, so, one of these you can do like use cases. Let's say you do use cases, right? All right. This is perfect. So, here they talk about a couple of use cases for Microsoft Defender. And actually, uh, someone they talk about use cases, but hold on, let me give it. Uh, hold on, that's okay, I'll bring it up. Y'all be looking at my work stuff, man. Unless y'all got a clearance. 
let's see, I dumped this in. All right, here we go. So we was talking about uh, implementing a MITRE ATT&CK framework. Let me just do this. Let's download that. I don't need to be showing too much. Uh, and let's see if it'll... Uh, All right. All right, cool. Let's get this crap out of here. So whenever you're implementing, um, you know, one of these SOAR products or SAM or any of that, they refer to this stuff as use cases, right? So they was talking about implement some use cases, if you know, reconnaissance alerts and all that stuff that a team might actually have to deal with. Uh, here you go, the page right here. Let's just go to this page. There we go. All right, so now this is what I want to talk about. So you look at this, right? You look at this and you look at reconnaissance, they talk about, but let's just go down the lateral movement. So here are the, the actual lateral movement use cases, right? This is the lateral movement use cases. They talk about all that, but look what they got at the bottom. Primary MITRE attack, lateral movement, TA0. So this tells you the tactic, and then this tells you the technique, T1-2010, T8-8. Let's see if we can go. So this doesn't have the numbers, but this, this correlates with the, it probably, uh, I don't know if we still got the other one up. We still got the other one up. Uh, yeah, there we go. So you see these that come up right here? You see that? See how the number comes up? So when you go and you're building out your, uh, let's go back to here. Oh, yeah, we're on the right thing. So if you notice here, where am I? Oh, here we go, right here. So if you notice here, it gives you, it tells you that from this alert, which is, and I think this was a big one. This came out like a couple of weeks ago. I seen some incidents on print spooler. Um, it tells you the tactic that was used and it also tells you the technique. And so this helps you defend against this. You can actually defend against these once you know the minor tactic and technique. So for example, if, if you know somebody is doing active scanning, now it's a couple of things you can do. Uh, you can turn off, um, uh, you can turn off ping, but you probably don't want to do that. Uh, but if you know that somebody is using one of these techniques, you know, you can lock down, use two-factor, you know, for phishing information, implement security awareness training, you know, things like that. If they're using techniques to do initial access, right, make sure you lock down your public-facing applications, you know, look out for phishing emails. So, when you look at the miner, it actually tells you exactly what you need to do to stop some of this stuff, you know. So it's a, it's a great tool. But my point here was Microsoft has this product called APT Defender. Uh, and so if you work in a company, they'll implement these use cases, meaning these alerts. And so it gives you the miter, though. The miter TTPs, tactic techniques and procedures that you can use to defend against this stuff. So when you go and work somewhere, and they say, well, we use ATP, you know, we're going to uh, get you access to ATP. Nobody's going to sit down and, and they, they'll give you a little bit of training. But, you know, just just so you can come in and look good, you can say, OK, you know, not necessarily look good, just so you can do your job. You can kind of understand that, OK, I get a threat. I get one of these threats. I, I'm just totally confused. I don't know what to do. Now you got some level of understanding, you know, you know how to uh, defend and how to uh, you know implement some countermeasures and controls. Same thing here. You get alerts and security on you. Um, you know, you know what to do. You know, if it's a malware, we want to know if you a threat hunter. You can look at it and say, oh, I see how they got in now. And you can provide some countermeasures and control. So I just want to go over that little stuff, man. Um, it's a pretty good tool. You know, it's free. Something to play around with. Uh, security Onion is actually becoming pretty becoming pretty popular. I don't know what's up with CyberChef. I guess it decided to, uh, this does like base 64 encoding. You can look at stuff like that, but uh, I guess it decided it didn't want to work today. 
but that's okay. But yeah, so that's that's all I have. Any questions, guys? Uh, no, yes. yes. Thanks, Al. I definitely appreciate it. Let me uh, go through the chat. I don't see anything. Let's see if somebody emailed me. And when you created, when you stood up Teapot, right? You basically, it's going to have vulnerabilities on it that you just actually ex can expose to the real world. And then you just look at the widgets in the dashboard. Um, so, to determine so, your workflow. Yeah. So, Teapot is actually, so all these threats, this box is just, I created a firewall rule to let everything into this box. So it's going to get, um, it'll get everything. Like it's just wide open. So from here, you can actually see, you know, what's being attacked. Now, the good thing about Teapot too is it actually has the built-in, you know, it has Kibana built-in, right? Okay. You can actually, you know, you can run your queries and stuff up here if you want and do some, uh, some additional digging. And, you know, you can get all your stuff. You can run run some additional oh, source IP. I don't know what I had on that. But you can actually, you know, do some deep diving and look into it. Okay. Oh, that's my host. So Ernest asks, what, what do you use to generate malicious traffic? Or you just put it out there on the internet and the malicious traffic just automatically goes to your box because of the scanning and things of that nature, correct? Yeah, so for a teapot honeypot, it's built in to generate um you know that you get the you get the malicious traffic just automatically. You know, it's like a box sitting on the internet that you can attack, like it doesn't have. But me, how do I generate traffic in um uh, I generate my own traffic in uh now I wouldn't advise you to do this, but I generate my own traffic and security on you. Um, and I, I'll show you how, because I got, I got a network and I got, uh, uh, maybe I should have just did an SMB connection. That might've been smarter, but that's okay. Uh, so what I do, man, is I actually go to a bunch of malicious sites, like no malicious sites, uh, And I just download a bunch of, like a bunch of malicious IPs, domain names, and all that stuff. I got, let's see. Yeah, so here, I got like, it's only like 50 here. Let's see, it's only like 20 here. I may have a, another file that uh, if you want, I can give to you, but like I said before, uh, it's not the wisest thing to do. Uh, so, you know, you can go to any one of these sites. Uh, here it's got like, you know, 331. Like all these are known malicious IPs and all that stuff. So, but it's it's not. Now, I do it to generate uh, bad traffic. But if you want to practice on looking for IOCs and looking for, you know, uh, Al, before you, before you, hold on one second. So when you take that list, you run it in like TCP replay or something? Uh, so I take the list and I dump the list. Hold on one second. Okay. What's up, honey? Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to call Leah to tell her. To okay. Okay. All right. So what I do, I just dump it in a browser. And so here's what I use. So I dump this in a browser. Now, remember this network. It's just a, um, man, I went out of there that fast. Man, I upgraded to uh, Pop OS, uh, uh, Pop OS, what is, what, what's Ubuntu at now? 2110 or something like that? I don't know. I can check quickly. No big deal. I just okay. upgraded and, and it's it changes changed everything, man. It's just put all the stuff down here. But I go to this site, man, called, uh, let's see if, if it's, I should have it in my bookmarks bar. And I, now this is just, this is just my way of doing it. Uh, maybe it's not in there. Uh, I go to this site 
called multiple URL opener, right? Yeah, I just go to one of these sites, multiple URL opener, and uh, I think it's like more, and I take them and I dump them all in, um, yeah, it might be one of these, open multiple URLs, and I dump them all in there. I dump them all in there. I don't do it from here. Sometimes, I, I, I don't know if I did it from here. I do it. I got like a Windows box on the network. Uh, like one of these Windows 10 boxes. Yeah, I'll dump them in there and then I practice on the steps to, of how I would, you know, narrow down that machine or get to that machine and look at, you know, some of the things that have happened. And they know CNC servers and all that stuff. So yeah, it's just for practice, you know. You know what kind of threats and but you can it's a site called a zoo if you want to practice on, you know, you know, install and you know, you do some live malware and install uh and see how you find it or or using uh you know using you know practice on using dynamic and static malware analysis or the uh sift uh workstation and all that good stuff, but just remember it's active malware, so I won't put it in a uh I won't put it in a uh I won't put it in a production environment or you you better have a isolated, you know, uh just a totally isolated environment. I wouldn't do that outside of uh I wouldn't do it at work at all. Even even if they gave me an environment to play around with. You don't know the network guys will tell you one thing and saying stuff is isolated and this thing you know you're looking crazy. But that's just my opinion, you know.